Alright, so, finally, I am going to go back to my Supernatural reviews. I'm still crocheting. I'm, it's the same hat. Yeah, I'm working that slow. But I'm only working on it when I'm doing reviews, so. <laughs> um, a meme that I found that I thought was funny. Okay, so, where are we? In hell. But where are we in the show? Okay. Pause real quick. Because I want to get the, um... I want to make sure I have everything set up right. Okay. So, I believe I'm set up properly now. Um, we are on season one, episode four. Um, we're starting out, I believe, in an airport with a very nervous man, which is never a good place to be. Um, so the, the reminder at the beginning reminded me that we are searching for Sam and Dean's father. I had already forgot. Like, he's sending them messages, so I had genuinely already forgot that they were searching for him. Um, I still have no idea what the fuck is up with this show. I have no idea why all the women around Sam burst into flames. I have no idea why either of these men are single. Well, I mean, Sam's girlfriend burst into flames, but Dane's a handsome fella. How come he ain't got a girl tagging along with him? Anyways, uh, let's see what happens. Play, damn you. Nervous flyer? Is that obvious, huh? You know, what are the odds of dying in a plane crash? I mean, what? 20,000 to one? <laughs> wow. That's uh, really reassuring. Thank you. That doesn't seem to be reassuring to him. I was say, why are we looking at a grate? And then I realized that something was about to come out of it. It's like... It's Ma. Y'all seen that movie? Such a good, such a good movie. Thanks. Amanda, how are you today? I'm doing just fine. Hi, Miranda. Have a nice flight, sir. Oh, I'm counting on it. Hmm, so... <clears throat> he seems to be feeling better. His eyes is all fucked up, though. And I don't think Miranda's okay with it. Um, uh, 11F, that's Okay, this is a stupid place to pause, but I swear it was it was rolling by. I was like, is Whoopi Goldberg on this fucking plane? He is acting suspect. He said he had to stretch his legs. But it looks like he's about to try to fly. Supernatural fans, guess the booty. I'm sorry. You were watching the George Foreman infomercial. Hey, what can I say? It's riveting TV. <laughs> Heck yeah, George Foreman infomercials. Alright, so apparently Sam hasn't been sleeping very well. And Dean is gonna get on him about it. <laughs> and possibly they're going to buy a George Foreman grill. Which I would suggest getting because I've had one and they're very nice. <laughs> So what, all this, it never keeps you up at night? Never. You're never afraid. No, not really. <laughs> nice. It's a nice knife. That's not fear. It's protection. That's precaution. Precaution. So, yeah, I mean, 
when I was living in the truck, I slept with a knife under my head. It wasn't because I was scared every night, but I was aware I was in a situation that was dangerous, so I kept myself prepared. Okay, so we've just met this fellow. His name is Jerry, and he knows Dean and Sam because he had poltergeist at his house, I guess, and Dean and their father helped him. So he's called Dean and Sam to help him uh, figure out what's happening with this plane that crashed. It was his plane. He got the call box, uh, the black box. He doesn't like the way it sounds. He needs it checked out. The boys have asked him if they could look at the wreckage, which is super morbid. But he said there's not much hope of that, so... That's where we are with this thing, this guy. Play. Look at the wreckage. Fellas, the NTSB has it locked down in an evidence warehouse. No way I've got that kind of clearance. No problem. Is he going to forge legal documents again? They're con he's constantly forging fucking papers. What are they? Rush perfection. Homeland Security? It's pretty Homeland Security. Okay. <laughs> There's definitely EVP on the cockpit voice recorder. Yeah. See what Listen. the EVP sounds like. No survivors. What's that supposed to mean? There were seven survivors. Got me. It is a Final Destination situation. <laughs> Which kind of does make sense because originally Final Destination was written to be um, an X-Files episode. And X-Files turned it down and then it got turned into fucking five movies. Max Jack. Why him? Well, for one, it's from around here. And two, if anyone saw anything weird, he did. What makes you say that? Oh, I spoke to his mother. And she told me where to find him. Oh, that's... I don't understand. I already spoke. That's not a good sign. Maybe. Voices. No, nothing. Hmm. So, he looks like he's in fairly good shape for somebody who was in a plane crash like a couple of days ago. Being fair, it must have fucked him up pretty bad mentally since he's in a mental hospital. I think that's the guy that yelled at him about opening the door. So, I guess that would explain why it fucked him up. But, okay, but that doesn't make sense either because Jerry told them that they didn't know why the plane went down. They had no idea why the compartment... Compre decompressed or something. Obviously that happened because he ripped the door off. I mean, he opened the door while in flight. So, why, if this guy is alive, he could have told him who opened the door. So why would they be saying that, that they don't know what happened? Mr. Jaffe. 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 You checked yourself in here, right? Can I ask why? I was a little stressed. I survived a plane crash. Uh -huh. Fair. And that's what terrified you? And that's what you were afraid of? I, I don't want to talk about this anymore. So I think maybe you did see... There was this man. And uh, he had these eyes. These uh, black eyes. And I saw him. I thought I saw him. What? He opened the emergency exit. But that's, that's impossible, right? I mean, I looked it up. There's something like two tons of pressure on that door. So the motherfucker was strong. Okay, so, like... I understand that 
the boys don't have this information, but we do. Because they started the episode by showing us exactly what happened. He was a passenger. He got infected or possessed by something in the bathroom before flight. He's now a demon who can open a two-ton door and cause planes to explode. We knew this within the first 30 seconds of the show. So why are they acting like it's like a big revelation? I mean, it's a revelation to them, but it's not a revelation to us. Like, I, I do not understand. They're going by and talking to other people who survived the crash, but... I mean, they're just going to find out the same thing that we already know. This show's a little redundant. We're only on the fourth episode, so I, I might I might start to get into it. But um, at the moment, it seems they're going long lengths to pad out short stories. Well, surprisingly, their fake IDs and snazzy new suits actually got them in to see the wreckage. How? There is no fucking way. I mean, I know none of this is reality, but... It's an EMF meter. Reads electromagnetic... Alright, so they got caught because they're kind of stupid. Um, two actual Homeland Security guys conveniently showed up and realized that the first two were fake, so now they have to run from actual Homeland Security. But they did get something scraped off a door handle. It doesn't matter, we already know. We, 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 are, we already know exactly what happened. Only in this case, little twin engine. Okay, so apparently it's going to happen again to this guy who is nervous about something. I'm not positive what he's ne nervous about. So, whatever this demon is, it seems to f feed on, like, fear and anxiety. Like, it looks for people who are scared or are nervous. And then it, like, infects them and just takes them over. If I'm understanding this. How you feeling? I feel great. I'll be back flying jumbos before you know it. Okay, so apparently the demon goes after people who are nervous flyers, specifically, because this guy was also nervous about being in a plane. I hope so. I bet anything he's going to take down that plane. How long have we been up? Uh, almost uh, 40 minutes. Wow. Time really does fly. That's exactly what the other guy said. Before doing... Pretty much exactly this. What is with the 40 minutes? Like... Sorry, my nose flipping. Yeah. Okay, so, why 40 minutes? Because it, it, the, he said the exact same thing. How long have we been up? About 40 minutes. Time sure does fly. What does, what, what does the demon have against airplanes and being en route for 40 minutes? I don't, I, I don't get it. My captions are suddenly off and I don't know how to fix it because every time I click the button, it pauses my recording. And that little three button area over there on the right side of my screen is no longer usable when I'm recording. I would have to turn off the pause for it to be useful. And I can't do that while still filming. So, we have to deal with subtitles that are off. 
I am sorry. Chuck, uh, if that's the case, that would be the good news. What's the bad news? Chuck's plane went down exactly 40 minutes into flight. And get this, so did flight 2485. 40 minutes? What does that mean? It's biblical numerology. You know, Noah's Ark, it rained for 40 days. Number okay. I've never heard of the number 40 meaning death before. Um, I mean, I know the story of Noah's Ark and, and it raining for 400 days, but I had never heard of the number 40 meaning death before. That's interesting. I don't know how accurate it is, but it is interesting. Okay, so I can't turn the captions off, but I've made them smaller so that they're less annoying for me. Because now that they're so far off of where they need to be, I'm wanting to punch the screen. Um, we're back at this being a Final Destination thing, where it's, now it's going after all of the survivors. And so now, we're back to talking to, I thought her name was Miranda, but the captions are saying Amanda. So now we're talking to Amanda Miranda. And, um... They're trying to get information from her by pretending that her daughter is in the hospital and she's talking, she just spoke to her daughter, so that didn't work. Um, but, yeah, with this story so far, it sounds like this is like a demon that is now hunting down the survivors of the plane crash. And what's hilarious is it said there were seven survivors. There were seven survivors in Final Destination, too. I wonder how many TV shows took the idea of Final Destination when it was passed around. Because I imagine if it was sent to the X-Files, it was probably also sent to Supernatural and probably also sent to, like... I don't know. What other, like, paranormal show was there going on at the time? Let's think here. Um... Supernatural was on NBC or the WB. Supernatural was WB. This is boring to y'all. I'm sorry. Okay, so apparently Dean is afraid of flying. You until now. You're joking, right? Do I look like I'm joking? What do you think I drive everywhere, Sam? All right. Uh, I'll go. <laughs> okay. The Seamlessly fearless demon hunter has a fear of flying. Um, the black misty stuff has come out of the vent and is very clearly after a Miranda Amanda. And they're trying to stop her from getting on the plane. I've already figured out what's going on from the first five minutes, though. It's a Final Destination spinoff, which I'm fine with, but... Normally, the people involved in the deaths are, like, aware of it. You know, this is like, this is like if Final Destination happened, but none of the characters involved knew it, and so they just went along with their lives, and these two investigators just started following them around trying to stop what was happening. It would be much easier if you told them, even though it sounds insane, <laughs> it, it, you could tell the woman that you believe she's in danger. She could tell you you're crazy, but you still could have told her. I mean, how many seasons do they go never telling people what they're actually doing? Okay. Alright, well, she's got to be the most well-adjusted person on the planet. So, um, they he went back there to talk to Amanda Miranda and find out whether or not she was already possessed. And he, he said Christo a couple of times because Sam told him that if she was possessed, she would flinch at the name of God and she, he should say it in Latin. Is that Christo? Yeah. There's no demon in her. There's no demon getting in her. So if it's on the plane, it can be anyone. Anyone. She shot him down. Come on, that can't be normal. Hey, hey, it's just a little turbulence. 
Okay, so <laughs> this did make me laugh just a little bit. Um, but I, I think, you know, before I said that this was a WB show and the X-Files was Fox, um, the fact that this is WB is probably why it's a little bit predictive for me and also a little bit boring. No, no offense to the Supernatural fandom. Um, I'm going to give it at least the first season. I do want to know what happened to their mother. But I'll be honest, this isn't my show. You believe that? Well, I will if you will. Alright, so they're, they've gone up and down the aisles and they're trying to find the person that is currently possessed. I thought it was going to be Miranda Amanda, but she seems okay, so... This thing's going off. What? What is it? Cristo. Okay. Well, they found the newly possessed guy, and he's the pilot? Um... How did he hear him say Christo from that far away? <laughs> Fucking demonic hearing. Okay, so they've talked to Miranda Amanda and gotten her to go and get the um co-pilot. Then they're going to try to do an exorcism of him. Now what's the oh, they're going to knock his fat ass out. Damn. Don't mess around with Dean. That looks painful. Dean keeps punching this dude in the face, and I don't think that's part of an exorcism. He mentioned his girlfriend, and... Dean's back to punching him in the face. That's happened a lot. Isn't there a way they could exercise him without injuring him? Probably not. Since most exorcisms die in the process. Oh, they got it out though. Ooh, it's ugly. It's like the swarm of bugs that come out of John Coffee in the Green Mile. Oh, back into the vent. But they said that... That looks stupid, I'm sorry. Pause. That, gr that CGI, whatever it was, just looks stupid. Um, they said that after they got the demon out, there was something they could do to um tr put it send it to hell but in the process and the in the in between time it'll basically be free to try to wreak havoc it's getting crazy but sam said the words so the demon should be sent to hell now I don't know. That's what he said would happen anyways. At least everybody's alive. D Dean's a little not okay. Just... Okay, so that part of the story is over now. Um, they went back and talked to Jerry to find out how they got Dean's number in the first place. And he said that he got it from... Their father, who they can't locate, uh, he said that the voicemail on their father's phone said to call Dean. Um, but Dean said that the voicemail had been not available, the phone was not available, so. Any sense, man? I've called Dad's number like 50 times. It's been out of service. This is John Winchester. I can't be reached. This is an emergency. Call my son, Dean. 785-555-0179. He can help. Okay. 
So now their father's phone is back on. But only recently, I guess. Um, yeah, that didn't clear up anything. We still have no idea what's going on with their father. We still have no idea why the uh, mother and the girlfriend blew up. I'm really trying to get into this show. I really, really am. <laughs> Okay, and that was the end of the episode. Um, I mean, it, it wasn't, it, it's not a bad show. It wasn't a bad episode. It had a good premise. You know, I enjoy the Final Destination stories. So, it just, I'm waiting to, I'm waiting for this show to really get its footing with me. You know, some shows, they take a little time. So, I'm going to give it time. It's got like 12 seasons it's got a ton of fans i can't imagine it's going to stay this slow you know what i mean um unless i'm just not understanding it <laughs> you know uh I, I i might just not be the um what do they call it audience you know for this show but it, it's okay <laughs>